Today I'll share with you five reasons to work on multiple pieces at one time. All right, let's get started. Hello friend and welcome. If you love abstract art and the creative process, you are in the right place. I'm going to talk through my steps and I'm also going to throw in some stories about being an artist and running an art business. And today specifically, we're going to talk about five reasons to work on multiple pieces at the same time. As you can see here, I am starting off with three pieces on paper and the paper is various pieces of paper because actually they were kind of just sitting around my studio and I thought, well, it's time to do something on these. And so I got them out and one of them, that last one there has black gesso on it because I had used it as an example to show students how I like to put down gesso. And I do that in black so that they can see it because if I do it with white, they can't see it on a white piece of paper. And therefore I had that piece sitting around. So I'm using that and because it's black, I get to start in with some white on it right away but not black because I already have a lot of black on it. The other two pieces I did add black and I did that after I did my usual mark making that I like to start with, which is to loosen me up, get me connected to my substrate, which as I mentioned in this case, it's paper. This is Bristol paper, uh, nine, nine and a half, nine by 11, nine by 12. Oh my goodness, my brain just shut down. Nine by 12. Uh, so, working on three this time. And the reason I'm working on three, and I want to record the whole process for you, is because I am doing a special project. This project is for Oncology Nursing Forum. And I'm going to include here um, some information about them in just a moment. Well, or I should say their magazine covers. Um, I have been asked to create covers for their magazines for this year. So this is 2023. And I believe this is my third cover for them. I believe the first one was January. Then I did a March or May. Oh, now, now I'm losing track. Um, actually, I think this one is for their July cover. So maybe it's my fourth one. I'm going to include photos here of the previous magazine covers. And what I need to do for this assignment is I need to create three pieces for them so that they can choose the one that they want to use for their magazine cover. And therefore, because I, I know I have to do three, I have always found it easiest if I work on three right away. And so they're going to have a similar feel to them, a similar uh, color palette, but each one will be, you know, different and unique. Now, the other challenge to this assignment is that because it's for magazine cover, the top area, the top middle area and the bottom middle area needs to be blank or not blank. Um, I should say needs to be bright and light, no dark colors so that their black print can lay over my artwork. So very challenging, right? You know, when I first heard about that, I thought, oh, piece of cake, I can do that. I can work, you know, work around those parameters. But, um, you know, it's not that easy. You know, when I work, when I'm creating, I like to create, as you know, very intuitively. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. Uh, I love fields of flowers and my art is inspired by my love for fields of flowers. And that is what I am creating. So when I am given constraints to the way I create, it does pose some challenges. Now, in the beginning here, I just went for it and wasn't thinking about that end result that I needed. And I never do when I'm creating. It's all about creating and putting paint down and, and getting into the flow of, of the process. But when I have a specific assignment like this, I'm not thinking about that end result just yet. I will start thinking about it much later in the process. And I'll, I'll talk you through that part once once I um, show you when I get to that point. So having some fun here with, with drips and laying down some colors. And I'd like to start with either warm or cool colors. In this case, I decided to start with cool colors, cool colors being blues, greens, purples. I like to categorize my cools and my warms in very vague categories because certainly a green can be a cool green and a warm green. And a blue can be a warm blue and a cool blue, but 
in this case, I like to just say my cool colors are blues, greens, and purples, and my warm colors are reds, pinks, oranges. And now yellow works with both because yellow you can mix into those blues and greens, and you can also mix it into the reds, the pinks, uh, to create an orange, of course. All right, I'm drying this so that my drips kind of stay there and I don't completely get rid of them as I try to add more color. All right, as I'm going through this process, oh, in here I'm turning my palette around and now I'm laying out my, my warm colors. So that's a parole red. And all these colors that I'm using, I believe all of them here are from Betty's Bundle, which I'll include a link down below, or you can certainly just leave me a comment and I am happy to send that over to you. All right, so I'm getting all those colors ready. And actually this yellow is not part of my Betty's Bundle. It's, it's a brighter, brighter yellow than the yellow that I've got in the bundle, which is the cadmium yellow medium, which I absolutely love. All right, I am just making a note here. So remember to include some information down below for you. So let's talk about the five reasons to work on multiple pieces at the same time. And there's a variety of different reasons. Um, I'm just going to go through five. There are certainly more than five. Let me start first with um, me coming from a background of customer service management in corporate America for the majority of my life. I am all about efficiency. So I'm putting down the first one as efficient time management. And what that does is that lets you, it kind of alludes to getting a lot done in a short period of time is the way I see it. So if I was to work on just one piece, you know, I can certainly get through it fairly quickly, but it doesn't take that much longer to work on two more pieces, especially when I'm working this small, these um, nine by twelves. So, or, or even when I work on five by sevens, I like to work in multiples, usually multiples of three, sometimes even four, because they're so small that it's easy to, to jump from one to another. So I can get several pieces done in almost, not quite, you know, it takes a little bit longer than working on just one, but I can almost get three of them done very close to the amount of time it would take me to just work on one. So time management efficiency, my number one reason. All right, my number two reason that I want to share with you is for um, uh, preventing a creative block. So when you're working on multiple pieces, you can jump from one to another. So if you're feeling a little bit stuck on one or if you're just feeling stuck in general on, you know, what to create, putting down several pieces of paper in front of you or several canvases in front of you and just starting on one and then jumping to another will get you moving so that you are not feeling so stuck. And just the switching back and forth, you know, when you do get kind of stuck on one, you can go back to it and have a fresh perspective because you are not just constantly just staring at that one. All right. So number two is preventing a creative block. And let me just jump in here and speak about what I'm doing. So here at this point, I'm, I'm doing some filling in, what I like to call filling in. So saving some of those original pieces that the, those cooler colors that I used before and adding some more mark making in the warm colors in addition to uh, saving some of those cool colors. So, you know, having those some of those blues and greens popping out. So I'll continue kind of doing this filling in and making some additional marks like I'm doing right there, adding some marks and see how quick this is. Although this is sped up, as you can tell, but do you see what I mean by, okay, I'll do some marks here. Now I'll do the same type of mark over on this other one. Okay. And now I'll do it on the third one too. So it really does going back to point number one, it really does help with efficiency. All right, so let's talk about number three. So number three on my list is continuous productivity. And what that does is it just allows for this constant flow of productivity. If you are 
if, if you are in the flow of creating, and I think we all kind of go through these phases where, not not necessarily phases, but you know, when you sit down to create, you're you're feeling creative. You want to create, and if you're just working on one piece and you're stuck, that kind of chops up your creative flow, your your creative energy. But by having multiple pieces, you can set one aside and jump to the next one and your creative energy continues. Uh, This could be true also, for example, if you're working larger and you need to let it dry. As you know, I love using a hairdryer or having that heating tool available for my smaller pieces so that I can I can continue working and my flow doesn't get so interrupted. So having multiple pieces, your flow will continue, your creativity will continue to flow out, and you won't be interrupting that. All right, so continuous productivity for number three. Now here what I'm doing is I'm coming in with some grays. I really love gray as a neutral to my pieces. It allows the brighter colors to pop a bit more when I'm using a neutral. So gray is kind of my go-to neutral, but I certainly like to to also use some earth tone neutrals as well. If if you have not tried that in your own paintings and you'd like to use a lot of color, give that a try and see how that goes for you. I'm always pleasantly surprised. I don't know why, because I know it works, but every time I'm pleasantly surprised when I start throwing in a neutral, just how much my other colors are uh, standing out and screaming, hello, I'm here. All right, so as I work through that, let's talk about number four on my list. So number four, I've put down as increased skill development. And what I mean by that is When you are working on individual pieces, as you can tell, I've got three pieces going here. They all have similar colors. They have, um, they're they're all the same size. However, each one is unique. The marks are in different places. The composition, the overall composition is different for each one. And what happens when you're working in multiples is that you are now working on your skill development in terms of working through each piece and understanding how to bring each piece to completion. So it really helps you focus on not getting stuck on one piece, but rather jumping from one to a next. So again, if you're feeling kind of like not sure how, what to do next on this one, and trying to solve the problems. Because the way I like to look at all of my artwork, every piece is, how do I solve these problems? What are the problems and what steps should I do? What steps should I take to bring this painting to completion? And right now where we're at, we're about midway through the paintings. So there's a, a lot more thinking, and you can see I'm tapping my fingers there, a lot more thinking going on And I have to think about each piece individually. How am I going to get each piece to work individually? In this particular case, I don't I don't need the three to work together. So I don't have that uh, stipulation in front of me where where I'm concerned about that. So my biggest concern is just simply how do I bring each piece together so that it's cohesive, that's got a nice composition, that the colors are working together. And then also, and my mind is going to start going there very soon here, is how do I quiet down those upper middle area and lower middle area so that the magazine uh, magazine word wording, you know, on the cover page can show through, or actually it floats on top and my artwork is underneath. So working on multiples and uh, focusing on each one of those individually as you're working each, all three of them at the same time, if you're working on three or if you're working on two or four, it's really increasing your technical abilities to be able to solve those problems and bring each piece to completion. All right, so here I am back to doing some more filling in, scratching in to that wet paint. 
I love watching my videos like this because although I was there creating it, you know, when I'm looking at it from here, I've got a whole different perspective on it. And I'm really loving that middle one there, the way it's coming together. And then the one on the left, I love the lower area. I think that's coming together. And the one on the right, I think overall still needs some work. I'm bringing in some, some colors. And do you see how I have that color and I can just move that from one painting to the next and just introduce it in different ways. Again, I'm, I don't want to make these look exactly identical. So it's fun coming in and creating three different pieces. But again, using, you know, the same color palette. If you are enjoying this video so far, I would so appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and then hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. When you do this, you're not just helping me, but you're also helping your fellow artists who might be looking for a video just like this one. The algorithm for YouTube is, you know, the more people hit the thumbs up and, and like the video and comment, that um, it tells them that um, folks are enjoying it and then they start serving it up to more people so that they can see it. So I appreciate your help in doing that. And that really, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to do that. It's um, something that you can do to help me and it's all free. Now, if you would like to help me in a monetary way, you can certainly do that. I've had lots of folks contribute to me and it's kind of like buying me a cup of coffee. There is a heart underneath the video and it's, I think it's got a dollar sign in it maybe, but it might say next to it, super thanks or just thanks. And what you can do is you can click on that and pick any dollar amount that you want. Um, to me, no dollar amount is too small. I appreciate anything that you can offer. And that helps me, you know, work on these videos. It takes time away from me being in the studio and creating to be here at my desk, at my computer, with my microphone, editing videos, doing the voiceovers and sharing uh, my artwork, my artwork with you. And not only that, but sharing with you what I have learned in my art journey. So I appreciate everybody who has in the past contributed to me in a monetary way. But I also absolutely love when you guys hit that thumbs up and also when you leave me comments because I love reading your comments and replying and answering your questions. I just, um, it is in my nature to help people. And so I especially love questions where I know the answer and I love sharing that with you. Okay, I am moving right through this and I'm going to be coming up to a point where I'm probably, not probably, I will be, you know, stopping for the day, but we're not quite there yet. We're getting close. And I love the way that they're looking so far. And it's funny because, you know, sometimes I look at it and I think, well, maybe I should have stopped here, right? Leave me a few hearts down below if you think I should have stopped right about here because they're, they are really looking good. But I did continue on. And again, I did have an assignment, a specific assignment. And there, the areas where I need to quiet down are not quieted down enough yet. And in some cases, not at all. And so that ends up having to be addressed. But if I was not doing this for this assignment for Oncology Nursing Forum, then I would have, you know, done it a little bit differently. All right, I'm packing up for the day. And here we are. I am back. It's interesting. My lighting is a little bit different, but I use the same light. So I don't know what's going on with that. This is more of a cooler light. I'm peeling dried paint. My favorite way to procrastinate before I get started on painting is to peel some paint. Now, I'm starting off with some warm colors or, well, warm or Oh, there we go. Cool colors, but the yellows work for, as I mentioned, with my cool or warm. So I decided to get out some cool colors here. 
and continue on. Okay, as I continue on, let me talk about uh, number five on my list for reasons why you should work on multiple pieces at the same time. So I love this last one because it's one that I have struggled with personally in my life and certainly you know, things that we do in our personal life creeps into our artwork as well. And we don't always recognize that, but it does happen. And so number five on my list is overcoming perfectionism. And I love this one because it's one of those things that I'm constantly working on when I am creating art. And that is, I'm trying not to be overly perfect about my my artwork. I really love, and I think I've mentioned this before, I love graffiti. I love the rawness of it. I love the expression of it. Now, my artwork is nowhere like graffiti, but I'd like to think that somewhere underneath those layers, there's a bit of graffiti going on, and that makes me happy, especially when some of those marks are showing through at the very end. So, as artists, we tend to strive towards perfection in our artwork, and that sometimes makes it harder for us to stay free, stay loose, and explore and enjoy the process. And so I want to encourage you to, you know, check perfectionism at the door when you walk into your studio and stay loose, stay relaxed, stay free. And especially enjoy, you know, that creative journey that you're on and think of it just as today I'm practicing, I'm having fun, I'm exploring, and let's see where it takes me. And that's the pr approach that I like to have when I sit down to create art or when I'm standing up in front of my canvas is, hey, let's see where we go today with what I'm going to do. And not all days, it's great, but the process itself is always, I want to say it's always fun, but then I think, well, sometimes it's not so fun, but it's always a learning process, I guess, is a better way to describe that and enjoying, and, and I do enjoy the learning process of being able to look back at, at a piece of art and say, you know, this is what worked and this is what didn't work. All right. So number five on my list is overcoming perfectionism. Okay, let's go back to what I'm doing here. Now you can see I'm definitely trying to quiet down the areas where the overlap of their um, the magazine cover will go. And this part is very challenging for me. It's like I want marks in there because that's part of my, you know, who I am. It's part of what I do, but yet I need to follow the instructions. Now, what you will see at the very end, I will show you the one that they selected for the magazine cover. And then the other two, I ended up going back in and doing a little bit more to them, uh, just with mark making, not with paint, but with my, you know, crayons, pencils, things like that. And you'll see that there's um, a bit of a difference. And I really love the way that they turned out at the very end. Bringing in a light value. I love bringing in lighter values. It just immediately transforms the piece. Scratching into that wet paint. Now I'm slowing down a bit here because I'm, I did struggle with how to balance those kind of quieter areas with some interesting stuff going on at the same time. Now there I put some circles, kind of more tone-on-tone -tone circles, just that so there's something going on where the, the um, wording is going to happen in, in black print. And that's one way to, you know, if you have quiet areas, that's one, one way to make to, to add interest to that area is to do more of a tone on tone mark making. If you like the way I create and want to learn from me, I have an online course. I will leave you a link down below 
and um, or just leave me a comment. Happy to just send that um, message you with that with that link. And the course we work on one piece from start to finish. I've got some exercises in that online course to kind of set some foundation for you. And the great thing about it, one, it's slowed down. It's not sped up like this. I'm working in real time. And the best part about it and the feedback that I have received from so many folks, what they loved about it is that I not only slow it down, but I also talk through why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, why am I putting this color here? Why am I choosing this color versus a different color? How I talk through my problem solving for that particular piece that I'm, that I'm working on during the course. So it's fascinating to listen to, um, and I, I find it fascinating to listen to myself talk through that whole process of what my thought process was, why I was doing what I was doing. So again, leave me a comment if you would like information and I will send that to you. And really all you have to do is just put the word learn and I will know that you want information for the course. So uh, the word learn. All right, getting back to this, it's quieting down overall compared to where it was like, you know, five, 10 minutes ago. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, my need to have to quiet down that middle bottom area, middle top area. And so it informs, you know, every, I always say every mark, every color you put down informs the next. And what happens is when I start quieting down those areas, then I feel this need to quiet down more areas so that it works with that area. Now, as much as I love the red on this third piece over here and that first piece, I had to take it out because it was uh, too dark of a value and the print, the, the black print really wouldn't show up very well over that. So I needed to unfortunately take a lot of it out. So getting close to being done here. All right, I have come back and I'm just doing a little bit more. And I think at this point I had taken photos and what I do is I take them home and I put them on my computer and I overlap where the words will be. And that gives me an idea of, you know, do I need to cover up some more areas? Did I save enough room for those words? And apparently I did because I'm coming in with my final mark making now. Just like in the beginning, I like to start with pencil. I'd like to start with pencil on my final mark making. And usually I go from one to another, but here I'm just working on one at a time for some odd reason. Don't know why. But I've done that before where when I'm working in multiples, I will, you know, pick up something like this, which is a, a Stabilo Woody, and I'll use that on each piece instead of individually. Down there, I'm doing some tone on tone, add some interest there. Now, I've got a black china marker to bring back a little bit more black, but I'm, I focused on the center area there. All right, so I'm working on the next one. I guess I decided to work on these individually for the final mark making. Which in my opinion, I think it takes longer, but who knows where my state of mind was at the time. The, these I did, oh, I, I wanna say a couple of months ago. And right now, at the time of this recording, we are at the beginning of June, so June 8th, 2023. My final mark making is much more intentional. It's not a whole bunch of scribbling, although I do like to do a little bit of scribbling, you know, get my graffiti on, so to speak. But it's more tone-on-tone -tone scribbling, so it's not really in your face.
Now I am going back and forth a little bit. Hunting for some stuff there. Oh, my eraser. So the beauty of all of these marks that I put down, whether it's Prismacolor Pencil or Neocolor 2 Crayon or Stabilo Woody or China Marker, they are all erasable just with a regular eraser. So don't be afraid to put down marks. Um, I guess I put down some marks and I didn't like them, so I came in and erased them. But sometimes I'll put down marks and I just want them to be very faint. So I'll come in and just lightly erase them just so you can see them a little bit. All right, one more. That third one, I moved it to the center so I can work on that one. There's my graffiti scribbling. And I love the crayons because you can come in and just darken some of the areas that you already painted if they're not dark enough or if you just want them to be a slightly different color. I've got a link down below to my favorite art supplies or again just let me know if you're interested and I can just send you that link directly. All right so we're just about done here adding a few more marks. All right, and we'll do some close-ups here. I've slowed this down for you. Now you can really see those layers happening and some of that final mark making that I did. So that's number one. Here's number two. I love that um, yellow in this one, the yellow with that kind of light um, blue-green. You can see my drips on that blue corner down there. Those didn't get covered up. All right, and number three. Much more interesting stuff. And I do like, you know, even though I have that really light area up there, I love the tone on tone mark making that, that's happening there. Okay, so those are the three. Guess which one they picked? Did you pick number one? They picked number one. So this one uh, is going to be for the July cover. And then see the final mark making a little bit different here. I came in with a bit more bold in my final mark making for those two other two pieces. Thought I'd give you a quick view. This is where I was creating the art. This is my studio. Here's another view. Love the California palm trees. I'm in San Jose. And then here, when I'm creating large, I'm up on my wall there. All right. Thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate you. Please subscribe, hit that thumbs up, leave me a comment, and check out some more videos here. Wishing you a super fabulous and creative day. Take care.